Good Friday afternoon to you. As promised, my Friday vlog. And today is uh, particular because I promised on my FB uh, page to whomever cares why I don't find Valentine's Day significant for me anymore. In the past, admittedly, it was not like a big deal. Like I expected somebody to give me chocolates or flowers. Not at all. Also because my late husband didn't really believe in that since for him it is all commercialized. It's just an excuse to commercialize so that people just, you know, do shopping. Okay, first of all, I just took a shower and washed my hair. So it's a bit wet here because I just covered with my wet towel and I took it off. So, it, so I am waiting first of all for my guests to arrive for my bed and breakfast um, room downstairs. Uh, I think in 15 or 20 minutes they're going to arrive already. I made sure already everything is uh, speak and span and everything is all well laid out and everything that I promised on the advertisement because they pay full price. They're not the, the discounted price. So I prepared everything up to the T in the mini fridge as well and all gratis, all for free. All right, so that's uh beside beside the point now but i just like to include in my uh video today because it's a special day today i'm having guests so the reason why i don't um uh, celebrate uh, uh valentine's day um is because five years ago uh exactly when my husband was here granted on the 16th of February, his visa ended, granted, okay, of two and a half months stay here. He did have to go to Singapore after a month's stay, something like that. And then he came back in this, on the same day, just to do the visa run, they call it. So anyway, he was, he, his, he was supposed to leave on the 16th of January. So he got another month. So he's, he's, to leave on the 16th of February. Okay, so we went to the travel agent to buy the ticket. And then, I mean, we went around the around the 10th, something like that. So uh, it was normal that, or it was expected that he would show that he would leave on the 13th or on the 15th. But lo and behold, he chose on the 15th. And I either wasn't thinking, and I'm sure he wasn't thinking either, so it was the agent that told him, but you are going to leave your wife on Valentine's Day, you know? And then after I realized, oh yes, that's right, it's a Valentine's Day. And I'm sure he also uh, realized, but he was already preoccupied with the visa because he's, he's the kind of man that gets very anxious easily. So he didn't want to take the risk to stay one more day and then after maybe, you know, it's, it's you know, he overstays. But uh, he didn't care, you know, he just wanted to live on the 14th of February. So that was the last time I saw him on the 14th of February 2014. The last day I saw him in person because that day when he left, no. See, I can't speak in front of the camera. It's crazy. So he left on that day, on the 14th of February, 2014. And that was my last day with him in our lives together. Can you believe that? In our chapter together. So it really uh, gives me that, you know, melancholic feeling or uh, let's put it this way I even forget the date so melancholic no I just feel indifferent of the date because of that very fact mainly so uh, that's why I don't uh, celebrate anymore 
don't celebrate anymore I remember when um, I took him to the airport I could share you this story I took him to the to the airport um, while we were in the car on the way I remember I looked up the sky it was around 5.30 Jakarta time and here it gets dark around that time so I saw outside the window of the car and he was looking the other way and I was looking the other way and we were quiet we were not talkative and normally we are talkative especially him and also me and uh, I saw this dark sky with the with the uh, moon uh, what do you call that I, I, I what the, the, the moon the you know uh, there's a word for it right not full moon I saw that and then suddenly I felt a pang of sadness and I didn't understand what it was so when we arrived at the airport and as we were walking towards where he already had to say goodbye to me because he had to check in the back that means I was I'm not allowed to go in anymore and without looking at me he said just quickly just before entering the 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 the, the departure door uh, entrance he said uh, please go to Milan and fix that pension okay he has already pension it's not like we, I have to you know do from scratch because he receives already pension since uh, I think 2000 I forgot now what, what 2000 I don't know I forgot 2010 I don't know 2009 he receives already pension so the fact that he said that to me please go to Milan if something ah this is exactly what he said when I die he said please go to Milan and fix that pension and I looked at him and but he wasn't looking at me and I told him how what kind of talk is that you know I told him that but he, he didn't look at me and then just before he entered the door he hugged me he embraced me he kissed me and then he said do you love me or not I said yes of course I love you and then he said uh, yeah that's what he asked me do you love me or not on his last call he gave me a he told me something he said you know that you are my life oh okay he said you love me or not of course I love you he said you know that you are the lights of my eyes the lights of my life something like that because on the last call he said you know you are my life something like that you know I can't remember the exact word but it's to that effect and I felt so strange you know I felt so strange and then when he checked in the uh, uh, baggage uh, I was expecting him to look back to just at least give me a wave you know because I was looking through the glass and he never looked back he never looked back on that Valentine's Day 2014 he never looked back at me I was waiting to wave you know and then he never looked back so I didn't wave at him I didn't and then when he went in I just went and grabbed myself a taxi and I felt so hollow empty on the way home I felt so strange and I felt hollow and the next day I, I remember I was sitting in the gazebo trying to start reading again a book that I bought I felt so hollow I felt so melancholy I felt so de not depressed because I'm not a depressed person but I felt really really down for no reason at all so little did I know that in one month one week or in five weeks he would be gone and I remember on the last call he died on Friday I think and he called me on Wednesday and uh, he was being difficult here that I must say he was a bit uh, 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 cranky when he was here so uh, on his last call he first of all he told me you know I feel nostalgic about this house here 
because yes when he was here he was a little bit complaining he said oh my god you know it's so far from Borobudur hotel he has no sense of you know distance of the city how it is built you know the layout so he said it's so far from Borobudur hotel because he loved he loved Borobudur hotel because also that's where we met and uh, And uh, he said, uh, I have nostalgic. So I told him, I said, well, you see, when you were here, you didn't enjoy fully, you know. And then that's when he told me, he said, you know that you are my life. You know that. He said like that to me. I was taken aback because he never talked like that over the phone. So I was just listening and that was it. He told me, I'll call you again tonight. That was three o'clock in the afternoon here, which is very uncharacteristic because he normally call, he would normally call around night time, my time. But that was afternoon. So the fact that he said, I'll call you again tonight, it was natural of me to wait, I mean, you know, to expect. That was Wednesday. And then I didn't expect the call because I forgot about it. And then on Thursday, on Thursday, I was watching TV already 9 o'clock in the evening. And I was saying, that's funny because he's been calling me every day. That's one thing about my husband. He called me every day. And not only that, even when I traveled, the moment I arrived in the destination, you know, whatever country it is, the moment I walk into the room or into the house or here in Jakarta, my telephone would ring. He had already calculated the length of time that would take me to arrive home. You know, he calculated himself and then the telephone would ring and it was him. That's the kind of stability he gave me, you see. And that's why I, 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 I you know, I'm so accustomed to that. So when he said, I'll call you tonight, that Wednesday he didn't call, I forgot about it. But the next day, Thursday at 9 o'clock, I was watching the, 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 the TV because at that time I still had cable here in my room. And then I realized, hey, it's already 9 o'clock, almost 10 o'clock. How come he hasn't called me? You know, normally he would call me every day. And then Friday, Or was it Saturday? Anyway, Saturday, the next morning. So that was, I'm talking about Wednesday. No, I'm talking about Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday morning around 5.30 or 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, I received a call from his sister, which is so out of character because he, she never called me, especially when knowing he's there with her, you know, in Milan. She never called me. So the fact that 6 o'clock in the morning, she called, I already expected. Not like she would tell me he's in the hospital or he's taken ill. No, I already anticipated that she was going to say he died. I expected when I heard her voice. She cried, of course, you know. right away I didn't cry I didn't cry I j because I expected could be from the words he uttered before he entered the departure lounge when he said when I die you better go to Milan and fix the pension what he meant is to get the pension transferred to my name that's what he meant because the pension was already there so when she called the fact that she said he died i wasn't surprised i didn't cry only later on i cried but at that moment no on the contrary i had to calm her down so i calmed her down so she was begging me to come to milan but i didn't make it to funeral because they couldn't wait so they buried him without me seeing him at all I only arrived when he was already, you know, 
buried the day after or two days after. But in a way, I feel grateful that I didn't see because then my vision of him is always that laughter of him, that healthy looking man, funny and witty and laughing and clownish sometimes, you know, and nerdy, you know. So that's the kind of images that I have of him. So in a way, it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't see the funeral. Funeral, I didn't see him when he died. Whereas his sister had to take care of him when he died because they couldn't move him since he died on Friday night or Saturday. So by law, they couldn't move the body, you know. So therefore, he had, she had to go and look after him at the apartment. So that was the story. So that that is the connection of why I don't find Valentine's Day romantic anymore for me because of that one thing leads to another, to his death. That's it. That's my story. I'm sorry that the story is rather dark this time because I'm a very... Uh, happy-go-lucky person. I'm a very jovial. Sometimes uh, my daughter says I'm ebullient even, but I'm exuberant, you know. Uh, so that's it. Once in a while, I have to also come to reality and this is what happened and this is why I just don't like Valentine's Day. It's not that I don't like, I'm indifferent. There is no meaning for me at all. On this day okay so my guests are still not here so soon I'm going to have my lunch oh no not really because it's only 12 30 I normally have lunch at 1 30 so yeah that's it I hope you uh, get a little glimpse of my life and uh, yes my ups and downs but mostly ups because I'm a very optimistic person so take care and talk to you on Sunday. I'm st I'm still I, I'm leaving the hair to dry naturally in Jakarta. Very very seldom I use hair dryer. Okay, ciao ciao. Have a nice weekend.